Hello, this is Father Rich coming to you from outside, again, the main doors of Our, our Lady of Peace Church and our next uh, session for How the Church Changed the World. Today's uh, essay is called Civiz Civilization in the Sea. Uh, but I come to you here at the cornerstone of the church, Mark 1976, where, um, and in, in thinking about what um, has happened, and I've heard many uh, parishioners share the stories of growing up here and seeing this, this place on 38th Street in Erie, PA, be transformed from a dairy farm to a, a major campus with this uh, beautiful church and a school and uh, really a place where the community here at Early Peace has been able to learn and to pray and to serve the needs of the community and, um, and, and really see this, uh, this farm be transformed into really a little campus of civilization. And the essay today talks about the ways that the church really helped bring civilization to our world. And um, it begins by telling the story of uh, a couple, um, a couple soldiers observing these monks uh, in uh, northeast England. And again, this would have been in about the fifth and sixth century, um, slowly transforming a marsh into a monastery uh, and cultivating the farmland, and how they were kind of fascinated by these men. Uh, wearing gray habits and uh, just kind of being about their work. One of the opening paragraphs says it this way, these men, those men were everywhere. They didn't speak much. They didn't swear the merry or filthy oaths of ordinary workmen. Their happiness was more unsettling than their silence. And then at appointed hours, they gathered and the sound of strange music, solemn even when most joyful, stole upon the ear. It seemed the low rumble of a mountain coming to life. So obviously talking about the times that the monks would go and pray together in community. Um, and we think of the great Benedictine monks and, and monasteries and the influence that they would have in bringing kind of growing civilization. Um, specifically, they're talking about an er uh, a monastery in Jaro, Jaro, England on the River Tyne that faces the North Sea um, and how there and that monastery would become really a center of great learning, the greatest center of learning in the British Isles in the, in the early medieval times and in in really in, in the Dark Ages even. Um, and so the reality um, of the impact of the, the church specifically through the monasteries. Remember St. Benedict? considered the father of Western monasticism, uh, founded Benedictine monasteries in like the uh, four and five hundreds. And from there, we would see this impact that the monasteries would be really uh, a, the center of learning and life and health and medicine in the communities that they would come to. And they would really transform those communities. Uh, we think of the different great saints that were the apostles, so to speak, sent to help bring the, the missionary gospel to England. St. Augustine, the apostle to the English. Uh, St. Boniface, the apostle to the Germans and the barbarians there. Uh, we think of St. Patrick and the apostle to the Irish. Um, and the ways that they really helped transform and be 11 for those places. Um, and really can't underestimate the impact uh, that the, the monastic world and the monastic life had in the uh, in Europe and really gave new life uh, and gave uh, focus and civilization to Europe there's a closing um, one of the closing paragraphs that I really think summarizes it well what happened at Jaro had happened and would happen everywhere the monks wherever they went brought light they drained the swamps they cleared the thickets they built mills they turned bad land into good and they introduced an orderly and productive way of life. Where there had been warring pagan tribes living the half-settled lives of part-time herders and part-time marauders, they built their monasteries, which became the seeds of free Christian towns. They made Europe and brought Europe to Christ. And then to our making it relevant for us today, their double task is ours again. Our wilderness now is of the intellect and of the heart. 
But we have their example to guide us. And the battle cry of the only true Lord, our leader in the vanguard, who comes to baptize the world with the Holy Spirit and fire. Part of the re-evangelization, the new evangelization that the popes are calling us to, really has to do with how can um, our church once again reignite uh, a Christian culture that really has had such a profound impact on our world. One that we take for granted now, living in the United States, which has had a real a Christian foundation exposure. And that's being threatened now with the secularism, the atheism. And so how can we and pray for the Holy Spirit to once again bring this new life to our, civiliz uh, to our civilization as the monks really brought even civilization in Christ to uh, the Europe back in the 5th and 6th centuries. So we hope that our lesson can inspire us. Thanks for joining me today. And we're so grateful that that same missionary zeal brought uh, Monsignor Daly to this uh, area in Mill Creek in Erie, Pennsylvania to build this campus to create uh, a great um, source of support of civilization here and that we can be renewed at Our Lady of Peace to do our part as well to continue to be, as our essay says, this uh, civilization in the seed, civilization in the fruit that we allow to be born in Jesus Christ today. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day. God bless.